In the past two weeks, the crypto political scene has seen a dramatic change. President Biden has threatened to veto any attempt to overturn Senate Bill 21. And the whole thing began with a really strange message from the White House. Considering that, it's puzzling that the president has already announced his intention to veto a complex accounting rule proposed by the SEC. So you're asking, why wait a second? I'm going to be the president of cryptocurrency Donald Trump announces overcoming the smart political machine. Bitcoin is popular among many. You like it, and I'll back you up even. Though I'm not a huge fan of it, I will govern over your nation. This ought to be a nonpartisan matter, and I've been attempting to convey this message in Washington, D.C. for years. Party lines must not be drawn on this matter. Men, I'm warning my Democratic buddies not to take this lying down. And the beast was pricked that day. Wow, the Democrats have officially decided to be the anti-dog party, I tweeted. In the United States, more people own cryptocurrency than dogs, and many of them vote for just one political party. It was only that week. Twitter users became very angry over it in the cryptocurrency community, almost like a purity test, it turned out. One cannot be considered a true crypto guy if he does not cast a Republican ballot. And word got out to the Democratic Party. So tell me what you witnessed, even. Though Dell withdrew $2.1 billion, he kept 58% of his business, which means there's money for Bitcoin. Based on historical performance, even a 1% investment in Bitcoin made double returns, according to analyst Joe Consorti. The potential benefits of Bitcoin investments are demonstrated by MicroStrategy. S6.33 billion dollars profit, despite the mistrust of other top investors like Warren Buffett. At first, you notice that 10 or 9 Democrats broke ranks on Senate Bill 121, an obscure accounting regulation that will let TradeFi guardians into our sphere of influence, correct? There are a lot of crypto jobs in New York, therefore. It's even more significant that Senator Schumer, the head of the Senate, is from that state. Applicants for exchange-traded funds ETFs, the SEC announces the call the day or two afterward. Whatever happened, I have no idea. Mr. Gensler seems to have been contacted by someone in the White House who told him to change his position. The only thing that stuck with any sense was it. Even though I wasn't there, I don't know for sure, but an ETF is on the way. It takes an army to launch a decentralized movement, but that's the beauty of it, isn't it? At all times, Brian Armstrong has 16 people in the District of Columbia demanding and advocating for. There are many crypto company owners with a bias, and there are also many people without a bias who are attempting to reach the proper people by mailing letters. Galaxy may or may not have played a role in that, but I still think they deserve some of the credit. Before we get into ETFs, though, I'd be interested in hearing about the behind the scenes stuff. So all of the spot Bitcoin ETFs added up to almost $58 billion in the first five months of trading. In order to determine which Wall Street banks and hedge funds recently gained exposure to Bitcoin via these spot Bitcoin ETFs, I perused all of the 13F filings. There aren't many either. And among those who do, I estimate that Morgan Stanley has a total of around $270 million. In addition, I contacted these financial institutions to inquire as to whether or not they support Bitcoin as an investment option. What I was hearing was that it was more of a reflection of their riches and it was a really strong statement, seeking this for their asset management clients instead of supporting the asset. Itself, they were catering to client demands. Coming from Goldman Sachs, you've had plenty of experience chatting with institutions. Do you understand what they're saying? Pay attention, the passage or reversal of this accounting rule and the market infrastructure law are the two most important factors that will change the U.S. crypto landscape. I see. So how exactly does the accounting rule work? The largest cryptocurrency custodians in the world, including State Street and the Bank of New York, can now begin to hold digital assets. Unfortunately, the market structure bill will have a negative impact on my business. Citibank plans to contact staffing agencies the day after it is passed. Regulatory ambiguity, uh, however, has prevented Wall Street as a whole from engaging in the digital marketplaces. It's the dread that someone from the Federal Reserve will call and tell you it can't be done. They anticipate a swoop from the SEC. Like nearly other cryptocurrency enterprises, they are under the impression that they will receive a Wells notice. Once that is out of the way, you can expect a swarm of financial institutions like Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Citibank, Jeffries, and everyone else to flood into this market. In a way, I'm hoping it gets pushed out a bit so that guys like us can get stronger, since that's when the true 
showdown about who will give services to the universe takes place. Thus, yes, the pioneers are customers of wealth management firms who have expressed interest in purchasing a portion of this. To give you an idea of how long it takes for an exchange-traded fund ETF to seize in certain firms like Morgan Stanley needed to be at least three months before their salespeople may call and suggest is that their clients invest 2% of their portfolio in Bitcoin. Keep in mind that people are orange-pilled, not merely bought, when they purchase Bitcoin. For sale is Bitcoin. Every one of you is a soldier in the crypto army that persuaded someone, maybe Brad Garlinghouse, to believe in the value of Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Ripple. Wow, that's an intriguing observation. A brand new asset practically always. Sells itself, doesn't it? Larry Fink was duped. The idea of starting a Bitcoin corporation didn't just pop into his head. In an attempt to persuade others of Bitcoin's future significance, 10 or 12 individuals worked together. So now hundreds of salespeople at Morgan Stanley and other RIAs throughout the country are reading up on the article and calling clients to ask, what 2% of your portfolio? Are you scared of that discussion is just getting underway? This will go on for at least a decade, Beth. Not just a few weeks. Two items are popular among the general public. It is well known that registered investment advisors hold the wealth of $45 trillion belonging to the baby boomer generation. That's a tremendous fortune. This generation is the wealthiest in Earth's history, and they're all going to perish. That money is moving to younger people, and younger people adore crypto, much like Charlie Munger did when he died, got convicted, and was sold. Thus, since wealth is being redistributed between generations, there is a new cohort that is quite content with digital assets. In fact, they consider them to be their asset class. Thus, that is the sole item. The second is that our government is completely incompetent, as if our government is unable to control its spending. Both the liberal and conservative camps argue that Congress is wasting money and failing its constituents, which drives up the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin follows the same storyline as gold and silver. That is here to stay.